Imagine you're a vase and someone is pouring a pitcher of water into you. And in that pitcher contains everything you could ever need for your life. Love, joy, peace, health, all of it. And the supply of water in that pitcher is unlimited. So what do we do? Many of us, desirous of sharing all the greatness we have inside with the rest of the world, will tend to tip. We'll tip ourselves over for work, some for school, our family, our friends, and we'll keep tipping ourselves over even when we have very little left to the point where we eventually fall over and we break. I love that analogy. It was written by the author Rachel Hollis because it really encompasses the importance of self-care. Self-care being the water. But today, I want to talk to you about the vase, which to me is the representation of self-love. How much does the water really matter if your vase is leaking? How much does the water really matter if your vase is in need of mending? How receptive can you be to self-care if you are lacking in self-love? Self-love is commonly seen as the ugly stepsister to self-care. We don't really like talking about it. And yet it's so important because self-love is the foundation to self-care. We cannot be receptive to self-care unless we first love the container that holds it. I want to talk to you about one thing we can all start doing to help better practice self-love. Changing our language. That's one thing we can all start doing. What exactly do I mean by that, changing our language? Well, think about this. How many of us, when we fail a test, when life's not treating us well at work, when our family and our interrelationships just feel like they're crumbling. How many of us say things like, I'm a failure, I suck, I'm dumb, I'm a loser, I'm stupid, I'm fat, I'm ugly, I'm all these awful, terrible things. We destroy ourselves sometimes with the language that we use. And with each comment that enters that negative space, we allow ourselves to chip our vase. The self-care that we had, exercising, eating well, sleeping well, that kind of goes out the window. That doesn't really matter anymore. We need to stop sabotaging ourselves with our language. We need to think, all those awful and terrible things that I say about myself, would I ever say those terrible and awful things to the people in my life that I love? And if the answer is no, I am not allowed to say those things to myself anymore. We need to value ourselves like we value the people in our life whom we love. It's not easy. We're gonna slip up. We're gonna say something awful again. But that doesn't mean we stop. I challenge you today, not only to do this for yourself, but to do it in the lives of the people who you surround yourself with. When you hear them say, I'm dumb, I'm lazy, I'm stupid. No, you're not. No, you are not. If you wouldn't say that to me, you're not allowed to say that to yourself. I challenge you to do that. Maybe that way we can all show each other how important that self-love is. Life is gonna make sure we fall over and we chip. We don't need to help it do that. We need to start patching our holes and fixing our cracks with every positive change we make in our language. In Japanese culture, there's an art form called kintsugi. The literal English translation means golden joinery, and it consists of repairing broken pottery by mending the areas of breakage with lacquer dusted or mixed in powdered gold. As a philosophy, it treats breakage as a part of the history of an object, rather than something to disguise. I think that's really beautiful. So I will leave you with this. Change your language, patch your holes, let your mended pieces shine like gold. 
Let the water you hold fill up so high that it overflows onto everyone and everything around you. Your love can change the world.